Right, so German breaks down the latest regarding the M4 roadmap, and yes, I'm aware this video is about to age very poorly because we are on the cusp of new M4 Max releasing. They're dropping very soon, but let's look into 2025 because we have even more M4 Max on the way, and that's what's specifically being mentioned in this new report. We have news about the MacBook Air, the Mac Studio, and the Mac Pro. So beginning with the MacBook Air, apparently production for the M4 version is beginning very soon, and this will just be a chipset refresh according to German, which is not surprising news. So we can expect the same 13 inch and 15 inch configurations. Now the time frame German gives us is sometime between Jan and March of 2025, and some leaning towards a March release similar to what we saw with the M3 models this year. Now that Apple's the ones making these chipsets, it seems they want a more consistent release schedule, at least for the most popular Macs. So expect the MacBook Air to be updated every March, and the MacBook Pro to be updated every October, for example. And based on the new M4 Max, we can guess a few other upgrades. For example, I think we should see new colors. Obviously, the M2 and the M3 share the same range of colors, and Apple did the same thing with the M1 and M3 iMacs, but with the M4 version, they gave us slightly different colors. And so expect the same here with the M4 MacBook Air getting a new range of colors because the design is staying the same for the third time. We can also expect Thunderbolt 4 support, a 12 megapixel center stage camera, and maybe also the ability to get a nano texture coating if you have the money to splurge. Also remember with the new M4 Max, it's now 16 gigs as standard. The Apple kind of surprised us by giving the existing MacBook Air models 16 gigs as standard, so I expect the M4 to get that as well. Also like the base M4 iMac, we should see a binned M4 chipset with 8 CPU cores and 8 GPU cores, but the full fat M4 should have 10 CPU cores and 10 GPU cores. Also, if you want to upgrade the RAM, you should be able to now get a max of 32 gigs. But honestly, that's pretty overkill. The next Mac Mark Gurman talks about is the Mac Studio. Allegedly, this was initially on track to launch with the MacBook Air, but it's now been pushed back to June. However, I do want to call out Gurmy because he actually told us before the Mac Studio would launch mid-2025. So why is he claiming there's now a delay? I have no idea, but anyways, it doesn't make sense to launch this at WWDC since that's where the last model launched and if you think about it, a lot of creative professionals and developers, aka nerds, are going to be buying these machines and they're the ones watching WWDC in the first place. You know what you should be watching though? My channel, of course. Subscribe now, I would greatly appreciate it. It would bring you the latest to Apple right to subscription box, so please consider it. It would be appreciated. Join the Saran Bike Gang now. Now, we don't have to do much guessing work when it comes to the chipset going in the Mac Studio because it's obviously going to get the M4 Max and the M4 Ultra, and we now know the specs of the M4 Max because that did release with the MacBook Pros. It's got a 16 core CPU, a 40 core GPU, and a 16 core neural engine, which means it's very, very powerful. And obviously, I'm assuming the Ultra is going to double that. So we can expect 32 CPU cores and 80 GPU cores, and maybe even a max of 256 gigs of memory, which is wild. I also wonder if they're going to move the headphone jack placement to the front of the Mac Studio, similar to what they did with the Mac Mini. That would be way more convenient. Finally, let's talk about the Mac Pro. What's happening with that? Well, initially, I thought this would be refreshed alongside the Mac Studio around mid-2025 as well. But according to German, this has been pushed back to late 2025. Now, that does make me wonder, what chipset is this going to use if it launches at the end of next year? Surely, it would be kind of late implementing a variant of the M4 because we would probably be on the cusp of M5 MacBooks by then. But either way, it seems like for the first time ever, every Mac will be on the same generation of M series chips. I say first time because the Mac Pro never got the M1 chipset, nor did it get the M3, and actually that applies to every desktop Mac apart from the iMac, which of course jumped from M1 to M3, skipping the M2. So clearly Apple cares a lot about M4 to put it in every machine possible, and it's really because they want to push Apple intelligence in our faces. If you're wondering about the changes that Apple announced with the iMac and Mac Mini a few days ago, here's a quick summary for you guys, and FYI, my clothes, my beard, and my hairstyle may change, but gloss over that, okay? So beginning with the iMac, the big news is the M4 chipset, which is not really brand new because we saw it a few months ago with the iPad Pros, but now it's in a Mac, which is very cool. And obviously this is a decent upgrade over the M3. Here are the benchmarks, here are the specs. It's this amount better than the M3, so yay. 
but Choke's Aside actually is a decent upgrade over the M3 because it's based on the TSMC M3E process, which is much more efficient. But that's not the big news of the day, guys. The groundbreaking change has to be 16 gigs of RAM as standard. I never thought this day would come, but Timothy has finally been gracious and has given us 16 gigs of RAM for the same price as standard. I can't believe it, guys. I'm about to faint in excitement because obviously this makes this new iMac much better value than the outgoing M3 version. You can now comfortably get the base model and not sell your kidney to upgrade the RAM, so that is very awesome news. Now, because 16 gigs is the standard, you can now get 32 gigs of RAM with the M4 chipset. That's a nice boost over M3, which supported a max of 24 gigs. And also, you now get a new 12 megapixel center stage camera on the front. So this is the camera we see on iPads and also the studio display. And it means that, of course, if you move around, the camera tracks you, which is very awesome. And you also get a desk view, which means you can now record your face and also an overhead shot of your desk at the same time. That is very neat. Though I do vaguely remember some quality issues with the studio display's front-facing camera, so I do wonder how this compares to a traditional webcam on other Macs. But either way, guys, I love myself some center stage, and so I'm glad the iMac now has it. We also get a nano texture display option with the iMac for the first time. This is really not worth it for the high price they charge, but hey, if you have extra money to splurge on your new iMac purchase, you can now get this fancy texture. And finally, we have USB-C accessories at last. So yes, the keyboard, the trackpad, and the mouse now all charge via Type-C, that's awesome. Lightning is finally dead. And also the icing on the cake has to be Thunderbolt 4 supports with the actual iMac machine itself. However, that Thunderbolt 4 upgrade only applies to the higher-end models. And actually, let's talk about the base model real quick because it does get 16 gigs of RAM as standard, that's awesome. But there is no storage upgrade, it's still 256 gigs at the base. That's fine to be honest because you can use external storage, whereas RAM is not upgradable down the line. Also, the base model does have a bin chip, so it's an 8-core CPU and an 8-core GPU, and also has less ports. But it does get the wide range of new colors the iMac offers because yes, after being lazy with the M3 refresh, they finally gave us some new shades, and I must say the new orange and green are quite snazzy. Also, thank you Apple for not being extra lazy and actually giving us some new wallpapers. The new wallpaper actually spells out iMac, which is very nice. So yes, thank you for giving us some visual changes. Now, of course, Apple's still shoving down Apple intelligence down our throats, and that's really the main thing they're talking about with this iMac refresh. But beside from that, this is a pretty decent upgrade on the whole. It's definitely a lot more substantial than we expected. And 16 gigs of RAM as standard is again a big upgrade and makes us much better value. Also, it has actually got cheaper in the UK, so it's 100 pounds cheaper. Now with double the RAM, that's awesome news for us UK folks. But in the US, it's the same price. And now let's move on to the Mac Mini because guys, this thing is tiny. And it's kind of crazy to realize how much wasted space there used to be with the older model. But yeah, the new design is a radical change. And the leaks were right, it is about the same size as an Apple TV. Now, apart from the new design, there are some other changes to note. Number one, we have new chipsets. So the base model has M4, which has a 10 core CPU and a 10 core GPU, and also 16 gigs of RAM as standards. That's awesome news because, spoiler alert, the price is exactly the same. So yes, we have a new design, we have 16 gigs of RAM, all for the same 599 price tag, which is pretty insane and unheard of for Apple considering they usually increase the price with a redesign. And also remember, if you're in education, you can get this for less. And so 499 for this is a steal. Now, obviously, alongside the regular M4, we have the M4 Pro chipset. This offers a 14 core CPU, 20 GPU cores, and 24 gigs of RAM as standard. Though you can upgrade this to 36 gigs, and with the M4, that can be upgraded to 32 gigs. You also get a max of two terabytes of storage with the regular M4 and eight terabytes with the M4 Pro. And by the way, the M4 Pro, I believe, has actually gone up in price slightly. It's $13.99 compared to $12.99, which I believe was the price of the M2 Pro, but that's not too bad, especially when the base M4 is exactly the same price, which I still can't believe. Also, on top of all this, and despite the design being smaller, Apple's actually given us more ports. So with the base M4, you get three Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back and two USB-C ports on the front. HDMI and Gigabit Ethernet's also still there. And then with the M4 Pro, you get three Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back. So yeah, honestly, Apple's kind of nailed this refresh. I'm very happy with this. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.